Is it okay for, for you? Yes, yeah, it's okay. It is okay? Okay. Thank you for your kind invitation and uh, it's a pleasure to do uh, a lecture to my friend uh, from Egypt. And uh, my talk is very uh, technical talk about tips and tricks to implant reverse shoulder arthroplasty. This is my disclosures. It's important to remember that uh, when you do reverse arthroplasty for the fracture, you can restore forward elevation. But if you want to restore external rotation, you have to repair the calf and you have to repair the infraspinatus on the teres minor, and you have to repair the subscapularis if you want to restore medial rotation. The deltoid is not enough to do external rotation. This is very important. And regarding the supraspinatus, if you can repair, I repair it. Regarding the approach, there is two approaches. The first approach is a superolateral approach. It's very easy because uh, if there is a big displacement of the grad tubules in superior and posterior part, if you do a superolateral approach, it's very easy to catch the tubules. The problem is the axial nerve, and you have to take care because it's five centimeters below the tip of the acromion. When you do a superolateral approach, you have just in front of you the glenoid, and you can do a very nice exposition of the glenoid. You do a capsulectomy, and you dislocate posteriorly and inferiorly the humerus. Sometimes I prefer to use a deltopectoral approach because there is an extension of the fracture to the diaphysis of if you have a fracture of the diaphysis during the operation, you can extend your approach with a deltopectoral approach. The first point is to uh, identify the tuberities and to identify the calf. And uh, it's very important to use a non-absorbable tag shutter. I use Masonal endpoints, and I use two uh, sutures for the subscapularis, one for the supraspinatus, one for the infraspinatus, and one for the teres minor. It's very important not to manipulate the bone because many times there is a osteoporotic bone and you have to pass the suture at the junction between the bone and the tendon. The key point for me is not to remove any bone on the humerus. Never, you have to keep the bone. You have to keep the calcar and don't remove the humerus on the glenoid. So we have to implant first the glenosphere on the base plate. You have to respect that. It's clear that if you put two eye, it's, it's a bad position. In a, with a superior tilt or neutral tilt is not recommended. The best position is an inferior tilt and in low position to avoid glenoid notch and to obtain a good compression. We prefer to use a lateralization of, uh, of the prosthesis because if you want to increase the compression of the base plate, is you want to restore lateral offset with a good tension of the external rotation, you have to lateralize in the glenosphere and you have to lateralize sometime in the humerus. Distalization is important to uh, increase the strength of the deltoid. And this is an academic rule, and I think that many authors agree with uh, inferior tilt, flush to the inferior border of the glenoid, lateralization and distalization, three, four centimeters. The, the first point is uh, how many degrees of retroversion you have to implant the stem. I think that you have to reproduce the anatomy. At the beginning, we implanted with zero or 10 degrees. Now we try to reproduce the anatomy and we put around 20 degrees of retroversion. And you can use a jig, external jig, to uh, simplify the retroversion, 20 degrees. Regarding the good level of, uh, of the stem, the good height, 
I think that uh, if there is a calcar, and the calcar is, is, uh, is respected, you can put uh, the stem to the calcar. If you have no calcar, for me, I, I consider that the inferior part of the stem is at the inferior part of the glenosphere. And with this position, is a good position for the tension of, uh, of the prothesis. Sometimes you can use a jig, a special jig, to obtain the good height. You have a good landmark with the pectoris major, and uh, Olivier talked about uh, Carlos Torrens, 5.6 centimeters. And uh, the most important is after you put the reverse, you have to reduce anatomically the tuberities and to repair the tuberities. So you can use many spacer because sometimes the prosthesis is too low and you can use a humeral spacer of five or 10 to obtain a good tension. So regarding the fixation of the, of the calf and the fixation of the tuberities, we use a polyesterase bond at the level of the metaphysis and we use four vertical bands for the suprascapularis, supraspinatus, and fraspinatus on teres minor. And we use two horizontal bands around the prothesis. And you see that the pool is opposite to the calf. So we do it in the same time a tendonesis of the biceps. Regarding the stem, we use cement uh, in the diaphysis and we use bone graft around the stem to obtain a good heading of the tuberities. And after we reduce anatomically the tuberities vertical and horizontal band to repair the calf. So the post-operator immobilization is very important. For us, we use a brace during four weeks in neutral position, neutral rotation on 30 degree of abduction. Never we use a brace in internal rotation because there is a risk of uh, retraction and uh, you lose external rotation. So this is the case. Systematically, we do a CT scan with uh, uh, 3D reconstruction. This is 70 years old, smoker, osteoporotic bone. And we decided to do a reverse atoplasty. You see that you obtain a good healing of the tuberities. And this is a result in elevation and external rotation. So with the French Orthopedic Society, with Pascal and David, in uh, 2016, we collected 898 cases of uh, reverse atoplasty for complex fracture. I show you the result of this series because we have a result with uh, one to five years follow-up on 420 cases. You see that the range of motion regarding forward elevation is 120 degrees. Regarding external rotation is 70 degrees. And regarding of major rotation is the sacrum. So the absolute constant score was uh, 57 points, ponderate 86%. More important is the functional result is 70%. And the Adler score regarding the external rotation was 24 per 30. If you follow the patient after five years, you see that there is no, the same result. We don't lose any forward elevation with a follow-up of eight years. It's very important to explain for the patient. And there is no fatigability of the deltoid in this case. Complication in this area is 12%. It's a lot. Instability because we did, we did the excision of the tuberities and uh, inner flame of the humerus. Because at the beginning of your experience, a long time ago, some surgeon did an excision of, uh, of the tuberities and it's a bad way. And it's a cause of instability of the reverse atoplasty. 3.5% of uh, humeral loosening is the same problem. If you don't obtain a good healing of the tuberities, the constraint for the stem is very high and you have a risk of humeral loosening. Denoid loosening is a mistake. Infection, 1% of humeral fracture, 1%. So if you want to summarize the negative pronosis factor of the reverse atoplasty in complex fracture is tuberosity excision, 
bad reduction or malunion or osteolysis of the tuberosities. This is no cuff, it's a bad way, or migration of the great tuberosities. So the good factors, prognosis factors is a patient, a good patient, a good healthy patient, and the surgery should be good. You have to repair the cuff, you have to repair the tuberosities, you have to obtain anatomic healing of the tuberosities if you want to expect a good external rotation on a good elevation. We prefer to use a specific fracture stem because it's easy to fix the tuberosities and uh, you metallize the stem. You prefer to use a lateralized reverse prosthesis because you increase the lateral offset, you try to reproduce the anatomy, and we start four weeks after the surgery as a physiotherapy, and we prefer to immobilize the patient during four weeks in neutral rotation. This is another example, 75 years old, complex fracture. We decided to do uh, a reverse autoplasty. You see the video of this patient. You obtain a good healing of the, of the tuberities, and he recovers a good good external rotation, good forward elevation, you see that, good external rotation. So the first conclusion is that uh, indication of reverse autoplasty is 80% of my indication in all patients after 70 years old, when the bone is uh, poor quality, when you have a, a community tuberculosis and comorbidity. Is. And the better results that we obtain in this big series, in the biggest series on the world, is that if you use a specific humeral stem with lateralized center of rotation of the reverse, and if you can obtain anatomical consolidation healing of the tuberosities. So the conclusion, if we compare with hemiatoplasty, is that the results of reverse are more predictable and more consistent than amyotoplasty. The message or the key point is uh, the quality of the repair of the tuberosities if you want to restore external rotation. So I try to invite you in February maybe. I try not to be virtual, but uh, I am optimistic and I invite you in Paris in February next year. Thank you for your attention.